Okay, I think we're going to start. So I would like to um, call to order the regular Urban Renewal Commission meeting for November 18th, 2015. Commissioner Shaw? Here. Commissioner Polly? Here. Commissioner Holliday? Here. Commissioner Mengelberg is absent this evening. And Chair Smith? Here. Oh, and Commissioner um, Benville. Benville is absent as well. All right. And uh, we'll start with citizens, citizen comments, but are you filling no. one out? No. no. He's shaking his Okay. And uh, anything that would needs to be changed on the agenda? Nope. That brings us to general business and item 4A, Downtown Oregon City Association signed grant proposal. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this... Uh, this item was brought up at a previous uh, Urban Rural Commission meeting, uh, a form of presentation by Jonathan Stone, the Executive Director of Main Street, Oregon City, uh, at which time it was requested that uh, he bring it back for further discussion. Uh, this is regarding a, a micro sign grant proposal uh, for the downtown area. Um, <clears throat> so with that, I'll just ask Jonathan, he's here tonight, and uh, I'll ask him to come up and, and present a little more about that uh, program and answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Good evening. My name is Jonathan Stone. I'm the Executive Director of the Downtown Oregon City Association. Thank you for inviting me back uh, to discuss this um, proposal for uh, a sign grant uh, storefront uh, uh, improvement uh, program or micro grant program. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, at any rate, uh, uh, to kind of give you a sense of the, the feel and the process that we were interested in, I wanted to share a short video uh, that is um, uh, the model program that we're basing this uh, grant proposal on. Last time we figured out how to make signs, and I, we did that really well. You, know, you go down and you can see them as they exist. I think right now we're trying to say, can we work more on that relationship between artists and business owners, between artists and, and fabricators, between the fabricators and the small businesses, so that we create a, a little bit stronger learning environment through this thing, as well as documenting that impact and, and saying that for in a limited period of time, with a limited amount of money, you can really change the perception of a neighborhood. So Cosign came to us offering to create this one-of-a-kind, unique, fantastic projecting sign to hang on our building, which was just like a major boost. We were brand new, uh, trying to establish ourselves in the neighborhood. Um, tremendous opportunity to get some more visual recognition, name recognition, uh, get people in the doors. I was so impressed with how things went. I thought it went amazingly well. Um, these design blitzes that they did, uh, they had us involved from the get-go. We were really active with our designer. He, he, um, we, we had six designs submitted. Um, the process was smooth, working with all the um, different levels of experts throughout the entire process, engineering, zoning, um, historic, too. but uh, it is so, so worth it. Trust the process, I guess. They did an amazing job. It's worth getting up at 5 a.m. on Black Friday <laughs> and the cameras roll out. And, uh, and I think people who live here are increasingly more and more proud. As soon as the sign went up, it was immediate that, you know, uh, people stopped and said, oh, I didn't know there was a music store here. Um, absolutely the same day that, that you took the, the, the whatever it was, the covering off of it, and my traffic doubled that day, and, and it has pretty much since then been doubled. This kind of business is differently than everybody else, and so that, therefore, we have to have a sign that's like... 50% of the equation of getting people to come in that don't know that you're there, you know. Word of mouth only goes so far. That's why I was so bummed when we got the place in January and we missed the year one. I mean, oh, that would have been perfect, you know, so I'm just, just lucky to be able to do it, be a part of it. Yeah. I really, and I'm not just saying that because we're going to be PC and nice. I mean, I really think that it's an awesome opportunity for somebody that's such a new business uh, on this trip, you know, and that. They've been trying so very long to get Northside to start popping and revitalizing it and having a new, fresh energy and, and, and commerce. And I, I just think that we're just lucky to, to have the opportunity to do it. You know, you design for outcome. You think about 
how this thing's going to look on a wall, how's it going to look, you know, on a billboard, how's it going to look on a, on a stamp, and now you start working with these signs and, and, and the 3D aspect of that, start thinking about exteriors and interiors and those kind of things. So for me, like, I, I've definitely um, have changed some of my design approach just to think about design for outcome and what this thing could look like in actual space. What I love about Cosign is that sort of neighborly, um, you know, we can, we can secure these funds, we can get these designs, and we can actually, we know all the right people to kind of make this happen. There, uh, there's an expectation of collaboration. It's kind of non-negotiable. So uh, if everybody's coming into it with that, that mindset, um, then it just works. Seeing the shop, seeing the tools, and just seeing how someone who's done this before implements it is, is eye-opening. I think that too often cost is put first and, and businesses end up with kind of mundane signage and your neighborhood looks like every other neighborhood. Um, so I think that the budget's a little bit higher, but rather than just having a commodity product, you, you have meaningful products that are adding to the neighborhood. I live in Northside. Uh, I definitely think it adds to the character. I've never done anything that was going to be outdoors before. So just in talking with the fabricators and, and you know, even silly things that I didn't think about, wind, water, um, never had that issue come up in my daily life. That something we were going to design had to, to, to live out in the elements for, for years and years. So uh, getting that knowledge from people that on a daily basis build things that, that are kind of icons in the community, it was uh, a good learning experience getting, getting knowledge from people who who have done this for years. Uh, my grandfather was a sign painter and I'm a graphic designer and an artist and I thought it would be super cool to make a sign that that helped out a business and hung there for my my family to see and all that stuff you know I just it's just a, a kind of a it's just a cool thing you know. The first time you do a project like Cosign I think you everybody is learning along with you I think the second time you're already trying to meet the expectations of the first time so um, yeah, I think what we did realize was that this is a replicable process. This does have interest nationally um, and regionally. I, I think there's communities all over the place who are looking to the experience of Northside and, and the first couple rounds of, of Cosign to, to understand really what the impact can be of, of signage and of engaging artists and engaging small businesses and um, engaging fabricators in a, in a constructive way. That I, Those learnings uh, I think we've confirmed that there, there's something we're building something that's compelling to people, to, to communities, um, in a way that the first time around, we, I think we were trying out the process to see if the process would work. I think this time we've realized that the, the impact of the signs is, is bigger than we expected. So this program, uh, COSIGN, is a little bit different than what we're proposing, but it kind of covers the essence of what we're trying to achieve. And it's with the knowledge that um, we've created a lot of big change downtown, but now we need to sort of focus on some of the, the smaller changes that are going to help our retail sector succeed. And I understand it's a, it's a bit of an unusual urban renewal grant ask in a sense that um, some of the uh, implementation might be business specific. Uh, but that um, when we think of it as a district-wide investment, uh, that um, you're, in, you're creating a, a sense of place, a sense of community, but you're also creating a sense of lasting um, knowledge uh, in, in the district that ultimately I think will enhance uh, the overall value of the district itself. And the process, um, which wasn't really clear in the video, is a juried process. And so people... Uh, uh, express interest in the program and so you might have say 20 businesses that say they want to participate uh, and then they actually go hand in hand uh, with professionals uh, through this process and regardless if the project is funded or not they end up with an actionable plan that they could choose to fund at a later date um, as money uh, becomes available to them but by by um, putting money on the table as an as an incentive to um, create the product or the, the investment um, at the same time, say across 10 projects, I think you create a, a noticeable impact uh, district-wide. And especially as we're trying to develop um, 
we're sort of at a fledgling point uh, in from retail and development in our district uh, that this would send a strong message I think to the community that uh, downtown Oregon City is ready for retail and has viable retail uh, in it uh, and um, so it just kind of hits on a lot of notes that at the end of the day will drive value um, in the district um, so but like I said unconventional but we think that um, the learnings from the process the um, the outcomes from the process uh, will um, ultimately um, be sustained <coughs> questions um, <coughs> Oh, okay. Um, I I do see that it has an economic <coughs> development component. It is signage is very important for businesses, and <coughs> business retention is is very important to revitalizing an area. And there's been a lot of work done already down there. Um, I do think it's important to have placemaking so that it doesn't look like every other neighborhood to make it a spot that people really um, seek out. And I like that art is brought into the um, equation. So um, there are signs down there already, Jonathan, right? Like Arch Bridge and like the for lack of a better word, the noodle place, the full fin or whatever that thing is. That sign's pretty effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what's different from this, I guess, than that, that these folks had to invest in themselves and do? And well, um, so those signs are all sort of stock signage. And so they're basically armatures with panels, printed panels. Um, in the case of a cosine project, what you might come up with is something that isn't that. Um, and, and, and in fact, I would, it's probably, um, it probably wouldn't get voted on if it was that. Um, uh, but, um, I mean, we could think of a district which is all just printed signs with lights on them, um, which is a prudent way for that business to uh, make an initial investment in saying, I'm here. But um, there might be further opportunity for, to, for us to help them claim their individuality uh, that um, it sometimes might be a scary amount of investment. So, I mean, I called up um, security signs in Portland and asked them to kind of ballpark the signs I saw in this video. And there's meant to seven to $10,000 signs. Uh, and when you think of that, um, a couple, like take one of our retailers that you, um, there's just there's twenty thousand dollars of merchandise in their store. When you're talking about their sign being half of their merchandise, that that is a um, a, a daunting proposition. But if you can come at it with um, saying, you know, we're we're not only going to help fund uh, meaningful signage, but we're also going to take this entire cohort through a process, the the savviness of the entire district uh, from a retail promotion and signage pr perspective has been improved. So let me ask you this. Um, that obviously was a, a, a bunch of different folks. So have you put together the artists and the fabricators to go along with the store owners? Uh, we've reached out to a number of professionals that have expressed <coughs> interest in participating. Um, the uh, By not just focusing on signage so if we can make some uh, storefront enhancements that like a merchandiser or a lighting designer might propose uh, we're going to broaden the scope of businesses that would be interested in participating um, really it's about looking at each business and saying what is the 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 most important investment that you can make to to enhance your visibility uh, and signage likely is a part of that equation um, but it may not be the whole part of that equation. Um, so we have um, on our design committee, we have um, a structural engineer that's willing to provide pro bono or low cost services. We have um, uh, an architect on our design committee that's interested in helping with this process. Uh, and um, I've reached out to a couple of merchandisers <coughs> as well that have expressed interest uh, in participating um, in, in some, some capacity. Uh, I'm pretty confident that we can build the full team around the 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 design charrettes uh, that okay. um, the video suggests. I guess the one thing that I took out of that video is I'm kind of a fan of uh, 
antique archaeology, those guys, the pickers that go out and do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And these are exactly the kinds of signs that they <laughs> dig out to repurpose later on. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. these could be a piece of Oregon history, Oregon City history, you know, 50 or 60 or 100 years from now. Mm -hmm. Can I ask for a clarification on something? So you mentioned that um, it's, it's going to be broadened a little bit, too. So that reminds me of um, Metro did these workshops a couple years ago where they came down to Main Street and they invited businesses to come and they talked about how they could <clears throat> basically bring the outside of their shop in and vice versa and really stand out and um, have character and draw people in and create a personality and place making. So will you then, am I hearing you that there'll be consultants to kind of help people look at their storefront and go even beyond what the storefront grants do, but to right. see and how I, they can make it pop? Correct, and, and, and that goes to the idea of, of window as signage. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that uh, there's, there's one building in particular, uh, the, the building at 6th and Main, which had the wardrobe uh, oh. that uh, went out of business. Uh, one of the first things I said to them, you've got to invest in storefront lighting to, and, and, and work on your nightscape visibility of your windows. That's your biggest sign. Mm -hmm. And um, if the business is not even up to that level, then I could see where this grant might step in and help them get to that level mm -hmm. and then beyond. Uh, and um, you know, if a merchandiser can come in and say, you know what, if we install this track system, then you can do these sort of artful displays that nobody else does. Mm -hmm. uh, that that would be fair uh, investment um, because not only would that retail tenant benefit from it, from anybody else who wants to maximize their window space would benefit from that kind of investment. Thank you. Is this uh, uh, for? Just the consulting work going on, or is this for actual purchase of the signs that these folks would use, or what is this? Our hope is to get as much as much of the professional services donated as possible. Um, the signage company <coughs> might charge for their design that goes into fabrication, um, but as much as possible, they're kind of getting to the design point. Uh, we hope to <coughs> be donated. Trying to figure out how many. How many clients you might have for this twenty thousand dollars? I don't know if that's you know if you're looking at. I think he said in the letter it says ten. That's to start with. That's our goal is to start with ten, yeah. and uh, we we plan to combine this with the Metro Enhancement Grant that we received um, a few months ago, uh, with, which was for a micro grant program. But when we we sat down, the, the ask for that was thirteen thousand. Uh, but when we started thinking about process and sort of what types of investments we wanted our business to be able to leverage, we realized that 13000 wasn't going to go very far. And that's why we're here tonight, is to sort of maximize uh, that uh, grant as well. I have, um, so I, my questions or concerns would be um, regarding uh, what the criteria is and, and who would approve I guess I'm worried about um, downtown being a pass-through for grant funds that are coming from this body without this body having say over the criteria. Um, urban renewal spending, as you know, is something that <laughs> people are very critical about in Oregon City, and and so um, if if there's money spent on something that is questionable by people in Oregon City, they're going to ask us. Um, so I want to kind of figure out how that how that criteria it would be worked out, how um, those grants would be chosen. Um, these are artistic pieces, definitely. There's good, bad artwork. Um, there's a lot of varying debates about what is a good looking sign or a, a bad looking sign. Um, so that that opens up a, a whole lot of questions. The other thing that I'm a little worried about is in the past on this commission and in other processes that we've talked about in the city, we're, at least in my past being on the commission, the concern was tenant signs and how we assure ourselves that spending money on a, you know, three or four thousand dollars sign 
is worthwhile if we don't know if the business is going to be there in two months. Um, there's still, you know, a fair amount of turnover in businesses that we can't, you know, keep track of. So is there a way to, you know, how do we make sure that that's an investment? You know, we've seen that happen where we've made investments, urban renewal investments before where the business doesn't last and then that becomes a big um, question that we get asked, why did we waste that money? Um, and then the placemaking, I, I mean, I agree. I, I, I think these are amazing. I think the level um, in what we want to see downtown is at that level. Um, and I agree that placemaking signage is, is a, a big part of that. I guess what I'm wondering is, is there a way that we could do that that's not necessarily tenant-based? I think we have alleyways that need signage. We're opening and redoing alleyways. What What is the signage that comes with those spaces? What is the, um, you know, just general directional kinds of historic signage uh, that could add to downtown that may not necessarily be tenant specific? Um, I mean, because I think we could do a lot of great things in, in that respect, um, but, um, so I, I guess those would be my thoughts and questions. Well, and I guess um, from my point of view, uh, that term that I have in my head is not quite right, but it, this is <laughs> not quite ready for prime time yet. I think there's a there's a shell out there, but I think the, the skeleton needs a lot more meat on it before I'm willing to, to dole out 20 grand. I mean, uh, Commissioner Smith is right. Uh, we have to be very careful about how we, how we Put out urban renewal dollars given the amount of um, uh, pushback there has been on urban renewal and um, you know we go back to the black point Inn, and somehow they got two hundred thousand dollars a long time ago but it still comes still, up. yes <laughs> people still remember I mean I never forgot about Kelly Field so um, <laughs> right so uh, I, I think it's early for you to come ask us for money. I think you need to flush it out a little bit. I think you need to have a group of designers and a group of fabricators and you know all those people signed up and ready to go and, um, and then have a process whereby you guys would judge those signs and who would be included <coughs> in that process and some way to, to you know figure out maybe you have to be in business a year or two years before you can qualify for the program so we know that you're gonna so, so you've established yourself I mean the last thing we want to do is even if it's a thousand dollars that's coming out of urban renewal put it in and then three months later a place is out of business you know we'll catch all kinds of you know what for I, that I think there's a, a number of ways to address those concerns and, and I completely respect um, the possibility of you saying, Jonathan, we're intrigued, uh, we want to learn more and, and, and dive a little deeper. And I think that's something that our design committee would be happy to do. And I think that all of your concerns can be addressed and, and just venture a couple of ideas. Uh, for instance, if it's a young business, it's not a grant, it's a loan, for instance. You're on the hook to pay it back right. if you're not in business af you know, after a certain amount of time. Um, another possibility would be uh, you know that uh, we sit down and we identify what the criteria is so the, the jury selection process is really interesting I mean because you are talking about art and you know like and you know why did one get funded versus another well you know it's kind of hard to say but as long as you met a baseline level of criteria that um, it's a sound investment then you let the art selection people kind of do whatever they do uh, and um, but I'm happy to to take that feedback back and uh, and to and to come back and present a a, a sounder plan, um, I think we were hesitant to sort of fully flesh out this plan just in terms of of, of time if there wasn't that much of an interest in um, exploring further, uh, just because it is such a um, a large project uh, for us to take on. No, I'm certainly interested in exploring further, and I also think that um, uh, that you guys need to be doing some more. Um, fundraising within your own organization you know either events or other things that are going to start generating income for you guys that you know isn't money coming from the city we've done a great deal of that this past year um, and if you look at the um, with respect to the the economic improvement district um, being revised uh, to approximately half of its value um, we uh, have fundraised more f from events than we ever have and um, 
uh, and, and intend to do more of that uh, this year. And, and I'm I'm very interested in, in being a diversified organization mm -hmm. from an operations standpoint. Um, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, how do we sort of pull in outside value to create investment? Is 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 where um, you know uh, some of our activities are at. Yeah, I just think that um, in order for me to get there on this proposal, it needs to have some more meat on the bones, and we need to have s some way to ensure that uh, you know that we don't get smacked for you know doing something and a business fails three months later or something like that. Um, and gosh, I had there was one other thought that I was having while you were talking. Well, I, I think, think it's important too when you come back to show all the in kind uh, work that's going to go in the process too, the amount of money, um, the investment spent, and the amount of um, in kind donated work. Yeah, so the the rough numbers that I threw at that were based upon you know the amount of hours the um, committees might be involved. And best also based upon sort of estimated number of time that uh, uh, professionals might give to the process, and so I had thought through um, you know, the number of projects that might be in the pipeline and, and, and how many professional hours might be on it, and then volunteer hours as well. Oh, I know what I was thinking is that um, I don't think anything really outlandish will come out of the program because at the end of the day, there's business owners that are advertising their business. So you know, I think while they may, may be really creative, I don't think that I think just because business people are what they are that it's not going to be anything that's going to be you know offensive because after all it is their business right and I don't think a jury would be interested in improving something offensive either <laughs> um, Eric well I just wanted to get a couple of comments in as the urban renewal uh, manager um, you know I really appreciate the the intent behind this program the concept and uh, the enthusiasm uh, but moving forward, I would also um, recommend that you proceed with caution because uh, these this would be allocating public funds toward promoting and marketing an individual business, uh, customizing a sign for that business. Uh, it's virtually impossible to determine the success of that business. Uh, that, but, and uh, I'm just most of you know this. There's so many variables that go into why a business does not succeed. Um, However, uh, this, you know, there, there are some other municipalities that have been approached by similar type programs, and I think the way they've gotten around that is to allocate money toward uh, just maybe frames or a consistent design that doesn't in, uh, indicate any sort of tenant. Um, right. That's the way uh, that the commission decided to, to include, that's what they decided to include in the criteria for the storefront grant. So we do award for signs, but it, it's not tenant related at all. Um, so and sometimes that can show, if, if it is tenant related, that can show preference uh, to one business from another. Uh, and and that's, that, that's not a good thing when you're using public funds, in my opinion. Um, secondly, um, we, we do subsidize the EID uh, based on a list of projects uh, that's put into an agreement that we assigned we assigned an agreement with those list of projects uh, this would increase that uh, uh, by 30 percent um, and you know in evaluating our projects for urban renewal and and the budgeting during the budgeting process we looked at other projects we've eliminated some um, during that process to, to include some others uh, this is coming in at a later date uh, so it's kind of not fair for those other projects that we looked at that we might have eliminated uh, to to allocate funds to this when it didn't go through that evaluation initially. Um, so I, you know, and I'm not sure. I I'm not sure if this it wasn't clear during the presentation if these funds for this program were coming from public funding or if it was from the nonprofit. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I suppose it should be super clear. The, ex the expectation is that businesses would match, and so um, any uh, that that uh, at least dollar for dollar, uh, there would be a private investment in uh, uh, whatever the project is that that comes out. I, you know, I just think that it's 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 kind of a questionable use of public funds, especially given the political climate urban renewal is going through currently. Um, well, I guess I would move that the urban renewal commission. Um, Ask the Downtown Oregon City Business Association to 
flush out their proposal and come back to us. Second. Moved and second. And um, I don't know if it matters, but there has been a um, citizen comment oh, that's been course, submitted. Which it it always to matters. Yeah. Um, you can come see, up. If you go to on the floor, <laughs> then you'll see the people that have <laughs> over it. Um, Mr. Chair and uh, Urban Renewal Commissioners, my name is William Gifford and I live in Oregon City. Um, I, three comments. One is I, um, I would want to extend thanks for the creativity, for the idea, of, because as far as I'm concerned, without creativity, you know, we're just all going to be slogging along in the same old ruts. <laughs> and we just have to keep coming up with new and new and new ideas to make this a better, uh, a better Urban Renewal District. And I think that this probably, in the long run, would uh, would increase the value of the district, which is what you know, which is what it's all about. Uh, anyway, I, I uh, kudos for the creativity, and sometimes they're not all going to work, but you just have to keep throwing that spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. Um, excuse the metaphor. Um, secondly, is, and I think it was alluded to before, but being a business person, I understand that signage is a form of advertising. And advertising is one of the most difficult things to measure. Because unless you've got a coupon code or unless you've got something that comes back and says, the reason that I'm making this purchase, the reason why I have been converted to laying down some money is because of this. And the whole, the whole science of attribution is what it's called, is how do you, how do you track what it is and it's and it's cumulative as well so and it's not always the first time and you know about advertising you know you have to see it several times before it sinks in so I'm just saying if there's a concern on the Commission about public response to expenditures of funds for advertising which is what it would be unless it was something as generic as the shape of the sign or the, the style of the sign um, it's, it's going to be a long time before you're able to really say the reason why these businesses succeeded is because we've got a great, uh, uh, we've got a great science system. You know, we've, we've, we've done something together creatively and cooperatively. It, I'm just saying, it, I, I suspect that it's going to be difficult to measure back specifically as to how did that increase the value of the district. And uh, the last thing is that I had a question is um, although it was alluded to, um, are there other urban renewal districts that have done this that we that we're aware of? I know that signage has been part of this district in the past, um, but I'm not an urban renewal expert and have not done that research, so um, I, I don't know. Okay, that's all. Only comments that I had. Okay. Um, if I if I could ask. Yes. Um, for us to come back, I, I'm sort of reading between some lines, you know, that things that we might address. Um, but are there sort of specific um, points of direction uh, that we could address? Um, well, I think one of them is a uh, a list or identifiable group of people and their particular skill sets that have that have committed to being involved in the program, and then. Um, exactly how you plan to evaluate those proposals that's a couple of things for me okay we have we had a motion and a second is there any other comments before? Um, well, I'm just curious about because as I was saying there's there's ten projects here that you're looking at probably for this 20,000 but it's going to be an ongoing project I mean because everybody can get involved with this if they want to is that correct I mean more than 10 people can participate in the process but this uh, is just for this 20,000 I mean that number could be increasing there's a number of projects that result from the process in the future you, this is just the baseline right this 20,000 that's to provide the incentive for the first 10 projects to happen sort of all at the same time right but this can continue on to be a bigger essentially yeah, yeah. Okay. So I yeah. just want to remind the commission that if we were to allocate twenty thousand dollars for this program, then those ten people would have to have their signs done within twelve months, given the measure that we're operating under. Well, I don't think we're suggesting that we're going to do that this this round. I think 
that they need to understand what it is <coughs> just to, just to, to yeah. have left to do to come back and let us look at the program again I would say to um, if you can show how it's not business specific um, different things of giving people tools that will last um, in the district so give giving that knowledge giving that collaboration and something that can be passed if that business you know goes out something that will be uh, lasting I don't know how you do that I mean the program we saw you couldn't do it and have it not be business specific that's the whole point yeah well, well there's, the the arm there, hanging there's lighting, there's the, there's the frame that the sign hangs on, there's all <coughs> sorts of structural things that can be lasting and that can add architectural detail to the space, certainly. We, we could provide evaluation of all the things that kind of get you to the point where the art gets attached. Mm -hmm. um, that's certainly doable. Yeah, I think that's the problem, just the but turnover, even though it's fairly stabilized down there now. I mean, we have a few coming and going, but I think that's kind of our problem here is the turnover that we have to uh, prepare for. So, Like I said, I know this was an unconventional urban renewal request. Great. And so and I really appreciate your willingness to entertain uh, the concept. Thank you for your uh, presentation. I, I would also just re mention that I think there's a lot of other ways we can incorporate signage downtown that doesn't involve um, tenants. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. And yeah. so we, but we have a, <laughs> a motion <laughs> and a second. And right. Um, I'm sorry, Commissioner, if I may just real quick, yes. I'd be remiss. Um, <laughs> You know, we, um, Commissioner Mangelberg did call me earlier, talked about a little bit of how they've used this tool down in, down in Canby yeah. and other areas, you know, and it's really about making sure that we um, are investing in long-term investments right. in our downtown. And you talked a little bit about that of, you know, whether it's a frame that goes up, which stays with the building and you can change the, f the sign plate out. Is that where we should be investing our money? Or is it more in the process to get to there? And I'm not mm -hmm. sure I'm... You know, I'd, I'd hate to send Jonathan away, but I, you know, I think there are concerns about investing in a process or into a into the actual sign frame itself, which, as you've all discussed, comes and goes. There's no guarantee there, but if you can invest in something that's structural, and I'm not exactly sure that's what you're asking for here. You're asking for money to go through the process. Well, I mean, so what, what down the association essentially is sponsoring is the management of the process and the bringing of the partners to the table. So there's a lot of time that goes into that. Uh, and um, that the, the dollars, essentially, um, we were intending to be the, the, the match or, you know, to go to the actual physical investment. As much as possible, the physical investment was going to come from uh, the, the dollars that we'd received uh, from the commission. So the problem I have with what you're talking about is you lose all of the uniqueness of those individual signs when you say, I'm going to put up a sign frame and I'm going to slide plastic things in and out. Right. You know, that, that takes away everything that this other program was talking about. I guess my curiosity is they didn't really talk about in your video what their funding strategy was, where that money's coming from, all that. That was a grant-funded program uh, on, on part of the American Sign Museum and uh, U.S. Bank Hale Foundation are the ones that So it's private there. dollars? I, mostly private dollars. There might have been some city investment, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, why don't you check on that and let us know? And I, don't, and I don't think the intent was to essentially end up with a, a sign frame where you slid a sign. It. Maybe it's a sign that can hold a different type of blade sign. You know, the blade sign can be changed. You know, but you've no, got yeah, the top I, and the I, bottom. I, I mean, I wasn't thinking of the old. Well, uh, that's what you said, though. I understand. <laughs> but I'm clarifying <laughs> yeah. myself that that was not in my mind. Well, that I guess you know we do have the American Advertising Museums in downtown Portland. I mean, that there are some places that, that you guys could go, you know, and and propose a program like this, um, and maybe the city could use urban money to do, like you said, some of the things that you're talking about. But. I, I just think you guys haven't done enough of your homework yet for this to be something we can approve tonight. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. So we have a motion. Motion and a second. Um, and can you remind us what the original motion was? Uh, to, to have them take this back and right. and you know flush it out some more and bring it back to us when they're ready. Okay. Well, that was seconded by Commissioner Shaw. Okay. Let's do the vote. 
Commissioner Shaw? Aye. Commissioner Polly? Aye. Commissioner Holliday? Aye. And Chair Smith? Aye. Passive. All right. So the next uh, agenda item 4B, possible dedication of a portion of 922 Main Street prior to sale of property. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you may uh, be familiar with a piece of property called 922 Main Street, 10th and Main, that the Urban Renewal Commission uh, owns, that we have been uh, in the process of trying to sell for quite some time. Um, one of the uh, questions that we've uh, had about the property was the extent of the railroad right-of-way. Uh, it was requested by the Commission that staff go back and do a survey of that property to identify that right-of-way. Um, and so we've done that. We've hired a company to go back. They've had to do extensive research due to the several complexities on that site. Uh, that research has revealed that there is a portion of the property that goes underneath the railroad, underneath Singer Hill Road, Singer Hill Road, that has never been dedicated. <laughs> so um, there is an easement uh, for the road itself, and that's the first recorded uh, easement in that property. Uh, but that property underneath has never been dedicated. Where's the railroad at? I don't see the railroad on this. Uh, it's right before Singer Hill there. Should be marked. Well, I can't make this any bigger, so. So it goes underneath the road? And it goes up the hill. Yes, it goes up the hill. So it was just uh, um, in the deed, it states something like uh, the land or the road should be dedicated for the inhabitants no, that's tenth and of the city. And, and the nice land itself was never dedicated. So the railroad goes right here. Just the road. Where? where? So this is basically a request uh, just to proceed oh, with a formal goes, dedication if right that's here. what the chooses. It runs right along. We're, we're, we're trying to right figure out here. the map here. Let me try to pull so there. according to the map, so Mary, we have the road, Where's and then the there's Hill? also property going that's up the hill, hill too. Is that correct? Yeah. Singer Hill is the, so the road that's showing. The road is that faint little. Can we put it up? Okay. Yeah, that would be helpful. Do you have your pointer, William? Uh, you can uh, use the pointer, but they won't be able to see it unless they turn around. So I think that one side of fire yeah. Do not look at laser with the remaining eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too good at aiming these things. So. <laughs> oh, geez, there we go. <laughs> we are not cats. <laughs> hey. Get bigger. Marquise in. Where? Oh, oh. that's Singer Hill right here. It, oh, is that Singer Hill? Yeah, oh. no, I can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> I, don't think, I think that's the right way that's underneath the ground. I don't think so, that's Singer Hill. I think it's Singer Hill. This is the railroad the right, right here. So right there. Is this is Singer Hill. This is Singer Hill. And oh, that's the railroad is. right there. Yeah. To that point. Uh, yeah. Yes. And so, so um, this little roadway right here is what you're talking right, about for exactly. uh, these and so this piece has Still never up. been dedicated. Yeah. This whole piece, that piece. This this whole and piece underneath and the underneath road. and underneath and the road. So essentially, somebody could buy that property and put a toll booth on Singer Hill Road. I'm still not clear, Eric. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Hear what? Can so in order to prevent that, the city needs right. the easement. So this is the railroad right here. This here. does this, no this good. Is the railroad? This does no good this to explaining right the public okay. what okay. we're doing. We, that's Singer Hill. That's Singer Hill. Here we go. All right, Eric. Okay. Okay. Eric. okay. Do it up here because the public here, has Ed. no idea so what we're talking about. Lights. Will you come over here, Eric? Please. So you can use the little cursor okay. here, and we're not clear either. Right. <laughs> you can Eric a little work out here today. Yeah. The red dot won't be able to be seen very well on the TV. Oh. Okay. So, this is the railroad here. Um, yeah. In, in this little V area. So it comes to this point. This is the road. 
Okay. And so this is the property Somewhere. that's in question. This goes underneath the road and it goes up the bank. Mm -hmm. And so that was never dedicated. But it doesn't reach the top of the bank? All that ivy and everything. No. Is, oh, it's so it's on the lot. Yeah. Is there any so, is there any actual flat land associated with that? Just what's under the road and the railroad. Mm -hmm. So is that where the chain link fence is as you're going up Singer yeah. Hill? This is supposed to be a yeah. survey map and it just doesn't meet no. my idea of... It says it's for a draft. It says it's a draft. It's a draft. Right. See, for a portionality, I mean, I don't... It doesn't even show the railroad going through. I don't see this the railroad. This right here, this V right here, is the railroad right of way. Okay. And so it runs out right there? It There's no more railroad? Right that there. ends on both right. sides. Right. So it this is the road. And there's a chain link fence that there's goes a chain up the link hill. Fence, it goes up the hill. Good. The property, this property, goes underneath the railroad and the road okay. and goes up the bank. And so that's the portion that needs to be dedicated. So how deep is that? I don't have those figures. So, I'd, so I'd like to see I a better map that. before yeah, I, I see this, this is this is map is just not accurate. Because right now it's attached to the lot and it's been marketed the with the so lot. What, we, what I'm requesting is just to go through a, a, a dedication process. Yeah. So we have the exact portion of land to dedicate. And then what are we dedicating get it that to? Mayor, uh, public, right of way. Chair Smith and, and uh, commissioners, maybe the way to think about it is the idea was to bring the bring forward the information that what's underneath Singer Hill Road hasn't been dedicated what we want to do is clean that up and before we do that we bring back a map that accurately depicts where the railroad is where the road is and what area is going to be dedicated so okay. that it, it makes a little more sense but the commission as the owner of the property is the one that has to approve any dedication and before going forward and doing that survey work we want to see I, oh so this this survey hasn't been done yet no we're it's, just wanting you to grant staff permission to move forward I, for the dedication process this is a preliminary survey okay so yeah. that's, I think that's fine with me, but I would want to see this map extend across <coughs> 10th Street to the other side so I have more proportionality about what all this looks like. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, both directions. Dutch Brothers and, you know, the, I mean, I don't need to see anything down at Lot G and Lot 3 and Lot 4 or whatever that is. Uh, I want to see what's on the other side so I can see where the railroad goes and I can see what all this is. I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. What, what I would suggest we bring back to you is, is one, a survey of the area that would be proposed to be dedicated and then a diagram that may not be a s exact survey to the to the inch, but at least laying out that context, showing sure. where the area to be dedicated is and, and um, where the railroad is crossing over to the other side and something to give you the context you need to, to understand what's what w the Urban Rural Commission would be doing. Okay. I also have to say that for the person that's been sitting up here the longest and voted multiple times to sell this property or not sell this property and to look at it or not look at it, the fact that we're just now finding this out is ridiculous. I mean, it is ridiculous. Um, I agree. <laughs> so I, I, we, we've spent a ton of money marketing a lot that we had no idea how big or small or what it was. Um, that seems like a huge waste of time. Um, this is... Anyway, I don't need to say more. All right, where do we go now? I, I guess just to just to clarify, I think that what I think most people perceive as the existing 10th and Main lot between Main Street along 10th and back to the railroad, we were trying to find that where the exact property line was along right. the railroad. Right. So that is still consistent what I think we've all historically thought of as 10th and Main. In doing this, what we've realized is that there was a dedication essentially where Singer Hill Road is as it crosses the tracks and comes up the hill that's, that, that never was dedicated to the public. And this, um, the way it shows now is what exactly what Tony described on the tax lots. This goes way back. And so this is actually how it is uh, because it was never recorded at the county like this. 
and we've never had got this far where we've actually had somebody really interested in the problem. We've never gone back this far, and that was that was discovered during the research that there's a glitch between county records and what it actually is. Say it's not so. And so it was never dedicated. So that's why we're finding that out right now. I don't think that what we historically think of as the tenth and main property changes because of this. It's I know I, I get that, no, but I, I'm going back to the fact that when we first put this on the market. We weren't told anything about concerns about egress and e exit and all that. And then the second time we put it up, there was all these different concerns. I mean, every time we look at this, it's a different story. Well, and let me let me take that one step further. Let's say we had actually sold the tenth and main lot, and then the new owner discovers that he owns Singer Hill. <laughs> what happens then? So two different things. One, there there is an easement for public it's not dedicated but there is an easement you also have what's known as prescriptive easement of people using it so the likelihood of somebody being able to stop the use of Singer Hill is pretty unlikely it's just confusing but and frankly you know it, it just this is to clean things up so that there's okay no doubt. We, All right, we I get it we wouldn't have sold it without a survey anyway that's part of the process of well and I I thought we ordered a survey to be done like sometime in November is that ordered it in September but then I came back to the Commission saying it's going to take extra research because of the complexities of the site and so he's had to go all the way back to 1918 and trace this. Wow. Um, okay. So it's, it's taken some time. Well you know I mean it is the oldest city west of the Rocky yes. Mountains Mr. Smith. Are we sure it's not a park? Well are we sure it's, <laughs> are we sure it's not a school? It, it, it could be. <laughs> All right, future agenda items. So I take it we're going to do nothing on this for right now. I would hope not. Unless you have an objection to the staff moving forward to getting the it straightened out and getting the dedication. We, uh, there was one request to speak on this. There was? Who? Okay. Well, <laughs> well you're not on the list. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he I is again. Him. Come on up. <clears throat> he perked up when we said toll nights. booth. Sit down, Alice. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair and Commissioners, my name is William Gifford and I live in Oregon City. Um, before I make my comments, well, I'll include in the comments, I don't think that the money that was spent trying to market this has been a total waste. I think that without having gone through that exercise, this probably would not have been uncovered. Or it would have been uncovered if a sale had been done. So I'm not going to beat staff up too hard on that. I, it's, it's old records for, I understand it's one of the oldest cities. Anyway, so <laughs> that aside, uh, what I wanted to talk about was, and I don't know when else I could say this, so since it was on the agenda, I'm going to mention this. It seems to me as though this property would be much more valuable and useful if we could find a way, if the city could find a way to provide access to the back of that lot. That is to say, if I could draw your attention, <laughs> since I happen to have this in my hand, uh, yeah. if there was a way We're aware of, that. of coming from the back of that, now I don't know who owns all of this? I do. Mm -hmm. I'll bet, yeah, I'll bet you do. So, but if we could, if we could have entrance here and exit there, or entrance here and exit there. Well, understand you've got a building on the corner. Yeah. Which is Blaine's bike shop. Doesn't come all the way down to there, though. No, no, it doesn't. Doesn't. But the L-shaped piece. So this piece going back up to the street. Yeah. Is parking. Or or bear parking lot, right. and that all belongs to our friends Ryan and Graham. Yep. And Ryan and Graham have made an offer to the city on that property, which was exorbitant. Of course. So we are at that spot where there is no possibility of an exchange. Short of eminent domain. Short of eminent domain. And, you know, you're not going to talk to me about eminent domain for that. I'm sorry. I'm just saying that that corner, a central point of this city, and it's, I mean, it's the, it's the front door to the city. I understand what you're saying. However, um, at the same time, 
you know, people were clamoring for the closure of the mill a few years ago because it was such an important site. And I'm not interested in taking stuff from somebody else at the at the barrel of a gun just because we think it's important. It's still private property, and we have to treat it that way. I agree. I agree. I'm just suggesting that there could. I don't know how how serious the negotiations ever got. I, my suspicion is we could talk to the owners and say yeah, this is valuable for the city and I think um, <coughs> time I, I think both of those guys understand thanks. that thanks he took half of it <laughs> I know all right um, are we good on this discussion so, yes we're just requesting if uh, the Commission would grant us uh, permission to move forward for the easement uh, the yeah. dedication any process. problem with that <coughs> no but I want to see a better map before we do that I do too. you will I, we had to halt the survey work until we got well, see a better map while you're doing so you, that. So you could get a mountain climber? Right. It's only, it's only <laughs> 27 feet. Future agenda items. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have one. So I had um, brought it up before in goal um, setting sessions, and I had, I had brought it up um, several times to our uh, former city manager about the 10th and Main property, about looking at it in a different way as um, a gateway and not necessarily um, selling all of it or maybe dividing part of it or using it as a gateway and that these properties are, a, you know, once they're gone, they're gone and that we need to make sure that we have um, what we need for our city to really present it well. And this is such an important intersection and it also has safety concerns. So I'm not sure where that was at in the work plan or if so it was even on the radar at all. It, it is on the radar. Um, the last time we discussed this at a commission meeting, uh, it was proposed that we get the survey work done first so we can find out what the f actual footprint is and then come back with at least three options for the commission to, to decide. And so we're still involved in the survey work. It's taking longer than expected. So once that's complete, then we can come back with those three options. Uh, thanks for the update, Eric. Sure, yeah. Any others? Okay, uh, city manager's report. All right, then we are adjourned.